Hi, this is Dr. Sampath Sundar, periodontist, working at Naseem Al Rabi Medical Center, Searing Road, Doha. Here I am today, talking to you about gum disease. Now, what is gum disease? And in the topic, I have mentioned the infection, which is the ignored one. Now, let me just explain you what is gum disease. Gum disease is inflammation of the gingiva, and thus if untreated leads to destruction of the periodontium and thus leading to loss of teeth. Now, what is periodontium? Periodontium is or rather are the structures which are supporting the teeth and help us chew our food. It includes the bone, the gingiva or the gums, the periodontal ligament which attaches the teeth to the bone and a layer called a cementum which is present on the roots of the tooth where the periodontal ligament is attached. Now how exactly does gum disease progress? Gum disease usually happens because of plaque. Now all of us know plaque. What is plaque? Plaque is, imagine if we get up in the morning and try moving our tongue inside our mouth, we see something soft which is deposited at the neck of our teeth. Now this is called as the plaque. What is this? This is actually accumulation of some acquired pellicle which then harbors microorganisms. Once this remains in the gum tissues for a longer time or on the teeth surface for a longer time, it slowly starts to harden. And when does it happen? It happens within the first 48 hours. That is, it starts to get calcified. There is deposition of calcium salts from the saliva which then makes it calcified and then it starts to become hard. Once this happens, then it starts to become difficult for us to brush it out and remove it. And that's how the initiation of gum disease happened. Now, <clears throat> if you go by the topic, I said gum disease, the ignored one. Why? Because most of us, we actually don't really go to a dentist saying that, Doctor, I have a gum problem because it doesn't give you pain. Now, it doesn't give you pain, so we ignore it. And by the time we go to a dentist and show them, it would have been actually either an advanced gingivitis or would have already started destroying your periodontium or then led to a periodontal disease. Now, there are various other diseases which can actually influence the progression of gum disease. Pregnancy being one of them because of the hormonal imbalance in a pregnant woman. The effect of plaque can be shown much more on the gingival tissue, thus increasing the inflammation level. Now, diabetes being another one, which is again because of the hyperglycemia, which causes increased which causes increased level of a certain hormone, which then causes in reduced uh, in increased infection levels, thus causing more of periodontal disease. Now, <clears throat> these two actually are one of the most commonest infection affecting the human mankind. Now, the first one all of us have suffered, which is common cold. The second most commonest infection, which is inflicting the human mankind is gingival and periodontal diseases. The first and the initial signs and symptoms of periodontal disease is usually gum bleeding. Now, usually gum bleeding gets ignored. Why? Because it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, we don't go to a dentist. And then slowly the gum starts to swell up, wherein there is a little more difficulty in in probably the, the gum bleeding is not just restricted towards while brushing, it actually bleeds even otherwise. The second most commonest thing which happens is food impaction. Now it is more common in patients who have malaligned teeth wherein uh, mechanical plaque control or brushing is a little more difficult. When the brushing becomes a little more difficult, plaque maintenance becomes difficult and thus leading to increased plaque and calculus deposition and thus leading to increased level of gum disease. 
Now, what is the implication of gum disease? Gum disease actually can have a bigger role to play because there have been a lot of studies since uh, the year 1996 wherein gum disease have actually been correlated to others, other, other more serious diseases like diabetes mellitus for that, for example, it is known to have an impact on stroke. There's a whole different field called as the periodontal medicine, which is being correlating gum disease to respiratory infections and etc. Now, not going to that much of a detail, would just want everybody to take care of their gums because at the end of the day, what is more important is your teeth are there because of your gums. It is the supporting structure which is holding the teeth in position and all of us need to smile. <clears throat> As it is very rightly said, it is not, it is not the uh, dentist who is asking you to come there and pay him money. The moment you don't go to a dentist, don't show what's wrong, don't visit him on a routine basis, that is when it goes bad. You come, show it to a dentist every six months, you see what is wrong with your teeth and we help you maintain your teeth in position. And that's how you reduce on the cost and reduce on the sufferings of your. Now, if I want to give you a little example, uh, here I have a model wherein, how does it happen? Now, calculus, as I said, calculus and plaque, they harbor microorganisms. Now, this microorganisms chronically causes inflammation of the gums and there is a fight back from the human body which releases neutrophils. Now, neutrophils are the first line of defense wherein neutrophils go and they try and fight out the black bacteria. But what happens here? In the fight, the battlefield is destroyed. And which is the battlefield here? Battlefield is the gum tissues. They get destroyed and slowly, slowly, slowly it starts to go down. The moment the gum starts to go down, the teeth tends to become mobile. Once it can to get a little mobile, that is the thing wherein a patient might come and tell us, Doctor, my tooth is starting to get mobile. What should I do? Usually mobility happens in a little more advanced stage of gum disease. Wherein in such a case, what really happens is, at that moment, we can't really do much wherein we try and do surgeries and try and save the tooth. Yes, we can, but it will a little more advanced kind of a treatment. So my, my say would be that you come visit a dentist on a regular basis and show your teeth to a dentist wherein they come and diagnose and see whether you have any gum disease or inflammation and take care of your gum disease at the earliest so that you can maintain a healthy gum, you can maintain a healthy mouth and thus, thus you can maintain a healthy teeth. Now a lot of patients do come to us even with a complaint of bad breath. Now we say that bad breath for almost about 70% of the times is related to the oral cavity and the most most commonest cause for bad breath is gum disease or periodontal disease. The second most commonest being dental caries, third being food impaction which in fact can happen in both the conditions wherein you have either a gum disease or you have dental caries where, which is leading to food remaining there and tongue coatings. So these are the commonest, commonest chief complaints with which the patient comes to us. Now I'm here to talk about gum disease because I belong to a field wherein we have learned the science of treating gum diseases and that is why I'm here to tell you that the earlier you come and see us, the earlier you come and treat your gum disease, you are at a lesser risk of losing out on a tooth and maintain your gums well and brush your teeth twice. Now a lot of people they come and ask us, Doctor, <coughs> how important is mouthwash? How important is all the other methods of trying and maintaining your oral hygiene. Yes, these are all important factors, of course, but there is absolutely no substitute to mechanical plaque control, which is nothing but brushing your teeth. 
Now, brushing your teeth twice a day with toothbrush and toothpaste for about 3 to 5 minutes is actually mandatory because brushing your teeth will help clear off all the plaque and calculus and then using a mouthwash will always act as an adjuvant to your oral hygiene maintenance and plaque control. So the whole idea here is to actually disrupt the plaque formation, not allowing the biofilm to be there on your teeth surface for a longer time and thus preventing dental caries and periodontal disease. I would love to answer your questions. I would love to have questions wherein I am answering them and clearing your doubts. Yes. Okay. I get the first one. Does cleaning weaken the teeth? This is the most commonest question which I have been always always asked when I am trying to attempt cleaning somebody's teeth. Cleaning doesn't make the teeth weak. It is actually the removal of the calculus and plaque which gives you a sense of mobility. Now once once we remove the plaque and calculus for a temporary reason for a little while your teeth tends to become a little more mobile but after say about a two week slowly the gum starts to become stronger. Once it starts to become stronger that is when you feel that your mobility has come back. Now it is not because of scaling that your gums are becoming weak. It will never become that because whatever scaling we do a lot of patients come and tell us doctor I did scaling and the sensitivity started for me. Yes, it becomes sensitive. Post scaling we always tell it will become sensitive because the deposits are mostly on the root surface. Once you have removed the root surface deposits, your dentine gets exposed which is very sensitive. Yes, I have another question here. <coughs> is implants the best way of replacing a missing tooth? Yes, implant is definitely the best way of replacing a missing tooth. It is because implant is not taking support of the adjacent teeth which happens in a bridge. It is a fixed modality of treatment wherein we are opening up the tissue, gum tissue, we place an implant inside the bone, we wait for a consolidation of the implant for a little while and that is when we start loading the implant. So ideal situation would be one implant per tooth to actually have adequate bone around it. Now usually what happens is when you have a gum disease your bone is kind of getting compromised and that is when implantology also kind of becomes a little more difficult. Another question is, is there any correlation between diabetes and gum disease? Yes, diabetes is known to have a two-way relationship with periodontal disease. What I mean by two-way relationship? When you have diabetes, your gum tends to get worsened and vice versa. When you have gum disease, it is known to affect your glycemic control or your blood sugar levels. Now, how does this happen? Diabetes is a condition where there is hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia is increased blood glucose level in the body. A lot of things happen because of diabetes. That is, there is a change in the microflora of the mouth which leads to increase in the number of pathogenic microorganisms which causes gum disease and thus leading to increased destruction. Now in a diabetic, usually the wound healing is kind of little delayed because of the condition called as arteriosclerosis, meaning the arteries in a diabetic individual usually gets clogged because of blood glucose levels and thus causing reduced response to healing and that is what causes increased effect on the gum tissue gum on the gums because of diabetes okay the most commonest question asked which is the best toothpaste doctor can you prescribe me a toothpaste which will take care of all my teeth um to be very frank i really tell all my patient use a toothpaste whichever you like why because the abrasive size and the abrasive particle in a toothpaste is standardized. They all market it based on the flavor, based on an additive. So what is more important is the way you brush. 
whichever is palatable whichever whichever you like the most the flavors there are a lot of products in the market there is something called as herbal there is something called as active salt so many companies so many toothpaste make sure you use the one you like and you can always go ahead and see the contents and then use it because the content of fluoride in an in a paste and the abrasive particle size these both are standardized so everything else what the companies play around is mostly by the additives so i would suggest you use a toothpaste make sure you brush well and that's what is more important the next question is okay what are the first signs of gum disease yes as i told previously in my talk the first sign is gum bleeding now gum bleeding can happen even in other ways imagine if you are an aggressive tooth brusher if you are doing that it can actually lead to gum bleeding because you'll be traumatizing your gums there are various other conditions which can lead to gum bleeding those are the ones which are little more serious ones but yes the most commonest cause of gum gum bleeding is gingival inflammation or gingivitis now it definitely starts usually the bleeding while brushing and then it continues and becomes spontaneous or while eating the food gum swelling being the second bad breath food getting stuck food impaction these are all the early signs of gingival inflammation yes does bleeding gum always signify gum disease to some extent almost about 70 to 80% of the times yes or in fact a little more but it can definitely have different other situations where the gums bleed there are conditions where you have blood dyscrasias there are conditions such as uh, acute myeloid leukemias there are conditions where there is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpurus then aggressive brushers all these also can cause gum bleeding but most 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 common side of gingival inflammation is gum bleeding yes can gum disease cause foul smell yes of course one of the most commonest cause of foul smell or bad breath is gum disease usually why does bad breath happen and the and and another commonest cause is tongue coating now what what is bad breath bad breath is nothing but volatile sulfur compounds being exhaled out from your mouth now what are these these are methyl mercaptan compounds which are present in your mouth usually happening because of the putrefactions of the proteins which are remaining in your teeth it can be a food impaction it can be the tongue coatings it can be simple plaque proteins whatever once it remains in your mouth for a longer time that is what it causes release of volatile sulfur compound thus producing bad breath now the okay now the important question is how frequently should we visit a dest- dentist now yes we always recommend visiting a dentist once in every 6 months now if you have already been told that uh, during in in certain in certain certain times we we in a in a patient who has a gum disease and who's been already under treatment for a gum disease we usually tell them to come within every 3 months that is for something called as supportive periodontal therapy role wherein we are asking them to come so that we can check and control the disease process but otherwise usually every person should make sure that you go and visit a dentist every 6 months and see if there's something wrong sometimes it can be a very very minute thing sometimes it can be symptomless so we can see if there's something wrong we can tell you and we can treat it at the earliest in fact we can do certain preventive measures wherein we are not allowing disease to happen which is then in fact the better way of trying and maintaining oral hygiene remember one thing right now what is more important for you is to smile good looking good is important as well as smiling good is even more important now when do we smile well when we have good teeth and when do we have good teeth when we have the supporting structure supporting it well so you take care of your gums your teeth and that's what is going to make you smile better thank you so much thank you so much for listening for being alive thank you